Hi, I'm Bernard Tambrella with Lotto Chivita, Bernie's on Main, Pittis Barbecue, and the new Villaggio Italiana Restaurant at Ross Bridge. Today I'll be cooking for y'all and teaching you how to make wonderful pasta and homemade bolognese raviolis for Chef Secrets at BirminghamRestaurants.com. First what we're going to do is we'll start off with three cups of white flour. Fill it up, make sure you get it all, there you go, nice and easy. This is a RoboCoop. You won't have this at home, guys, but you can use the Cuisinart, or you can make it by hand on the table. Make sure you make a mound, like a volcano, and in the center you'll drop your eggs and slowly you'll spin it to where it'll fill and just mix, mix, mix. When you use a Cuisinart, that's what my grandmother used to use at home, right when they first came out. The consistency that we're looking for is going to be the same consistency as like grated Parmesan or Pecorino Romano cheese with the old fashioned cheese grater. We got a pinch of salt, kosher salt always, don't forget that. And extra virgin olive oil, just a little, not too much. You know, people who don't know how to do it by the eye, teaspoon maybe. Now this is the fun part guys. As we spin, we're gonna add the water ever so slowly, okay? You don't want to push it in fast. And as you watch, it'll start looking like grated cheese. As it clumps together as that, and guess what? Boom, we're done. Do a flip. Now we'll knead it ever so slightly. It should be a little bit doughy and a little bit crumbly. All right, we're not done yet. Get the old wonderful fashioned plastic wrap and we want to make this really tight guys, okay? Pull it. Now, we want to let that sit probably about 30 minutes to an hour. As the dough relaxes and everything mixes in together, you'll start getting white dipples on the outside. And when you have a bunch of white dipples, you know you're ready to make pasta. So let's come back, we're gonna make our raviolis. We're back in the kitchen. If you can see right here, you got your white little dimples all over this. It's been sitting for about an hour, hour and a half. So we know it's firmed up and she's ready to roll. Wanna keep it covered all the time because you, you do not want the moisture to come out of it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of flour, throw it on the table. I love using my wooden table for all my breads. Open this thing up. Get it so tight you can't even get it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to protect it because we're only going to use the end of it. We're going to make a big, huge, long lasagna nape lasagna sheet and it might get a little loud guys okay the trusty kitchen age which I love the best start this bad boy off on a number one it's gonna take a couple of times to go through because the machine will knead it together let her knead out there we go making it smooth Another fold. There we go. I like to go to about a number five on this. All right, so my last press is number five. Come on, guys. I bet y'all can't tell that I'm left-handed. Whip, pull. Now look how long it's just gonna double the length. Voila, there we go. Separate, slide up and over. Uh, what we're going to do is now we've got our sheets laid out, we're going to fill them with our meat stuffing, okay? 
What I've done with this is a long process, but at home it's, it's a lot of fun to do it on Saturday with the family on Sunday. We took a mirepoix of onions, garlic, celery, and carrots. We cut them very, very fine in little squares. We'll take them in extra virgin olive oil and butter and cook them for probably about two hours. Very, very slow. On, on a regular conventional stove, I'd probably say about a six or a seven to where they just, just sweat very slowly. Once we get them to, a, to where they're really soft and we extract all the sugar out of them without getting them brown, we'll start adding our meat to it. As we add the meat, we do a pork and a veal and beef. And we'll take them all three together and we'll just beat it really hard. That's where it comes out to be so fine. Once we cook that and get it to a certain level, we'll take it and add a cup of milk to it. And we'll take that and cook it for about an hour. Once the milk has extracted all the sweetness from the milk and it's already reduced, add a little bit of marinara to it and let it cool on a sheet pan. I've got a portion scoop here. It's about one ounce. We love to use this because it's all about portion control and making them just right. We take them, space them about an inch and a half apart. It's fun when we do this. It's like production in the kitchen. Everybody cleans out. There's a, more than one person doing it usually when we do it for the restaurant because we do about 200 at a time. So now we've got an egg and water mixture right here. And we're going to call this like concrete, okay, guys? This is what binds everything together. One egg with a little bit of water to smooth it out. Take these, fold them over. Sometimes you don't get them centered, you move them over just a little bit. you got to make sure you get the air out of them. You press them down. And we'll take our trusty knife. I made them a lot bigger here than we normally do at the restaurant for production use so y'all can see. But when you cut them with this pasta cutter, it seals it. The press, make sure all the, is, make sure all the air is out. Here you go guys, you got homemade ravioli with your homemade pasta. Do not throw these away. Take them, set them to the side when you prepare the rest of them as they dry. You can have your marinara, boil them up in water, throw them together. You got something to eat while you're waiting for your pasta. We're going to go right now. We're going to go over to the kitchen. We're going to get everything cooked up. We're going to bring you back to the final product of what we've got, raviolis, and we'll eat them with you. This is how we do it at Lado Chivita, bolognese ravioli. For Chef Secrets at BirminghamRestaurants.com, Arrivederci. <laughs>